Hey friends and book lovers, welcome or welcome back. Today I am here to chat with you about Master Artificer by Justin T. Call. This is the sequel to Master of Sorrows by Justin T. Call. It is the Silence of the Gods series by him. Now, I reviewed the first book, Master of Sorrows, and I've put that review. It's spoiler free. It's on my channel, so if you haven't checked it out and you're curious, definitely check that one out before you get into this one. This review will be on the second one, which is Master Artificer, this beautiful book right here. The covers for these never fail to be absolutely stunning. I can't get over it. I feel like they're simple but they're very ornate and I think that they're just chef's kiss gorgeous. This is the second one however. This review will still be spoiler free. It may not be as spoiler free as some prefer because they will have to kind of compare it a little bit to the first one so there may be things in the review that you might find spoilery if you haven't read the first book but this review is going to kind of be a you know, I read the first one, Master of Sorrows, and I was like, oh, it was okay, and I'm still intrigued with the series. I'm gonna read the second one and see if I really wanna continue on type of review. And a lot of you in the poll that I did said that you wanted to see a dedicated review for this book to see if it was kind of worth it to read the rest of the series or how the rest of the series kind of turns out or where the story really goes in the second one. So I'm here to discuss all of that, but just a disclaimer before you really get into the review with me here. So I'm Master Artificer, we still are following the same main characters as in Master of Sorrows, except we get to see a lot more of the world and we kind of break away from the small town that kept us in Master of Sorrows. The main characters are still young, uh, in their 17s to the 20s kind of ages, but we don't get that really young prologue -y type of feel to the book. This book squarely puts you in like an epic fantasy, grim, dark action and politics. So it gets way more into the nitty gritty of the story, whereas the first one felt like a prologue. Also, just in general, we do get the POVs of more characters. We got some different POVs in the first one, but in this one, since the characters break off from each other, other and aren't isolated in the same small town. You see a lot more of their individual POVs and kind of where the world extends to. So you don't just see the world building from one person, you see the world building from multiple different perspectives because the characters break off from each other. They do end up coming together I think maybe in the later books but for now a lot of them have separated and you can kind of see where that goes and then you also end up seeing a lot of the background politics that we didn't see in Master of Sorrows when it came to the elders in the Master of Sorrows story. I have to say it's really interesting where the characters that are in this novel started out in Master of Sorrows and where they ended up here and some of them have even found their strengths whereas you might not have seen them have strengths in the first one so that was also really intriguing and really great to see in this novel. I will say I don't know when the third one comes out it was supposed to come out the day I'm filming this, February 18th, but I do not see it anywhere. I don't think there's a real date. That's a date that I got from Goodreads, so we'll see. But hopefully some point this year, the third one will come out for this series. Just FYI in case anyone's wondering that, because I know I was wondering that too. So I'm gonna discuss the writing style, and since this is a sequel from the same author, the writing style hasn't really changed. It is still accessible, it's still fairly easy to read, and it feels really like a classical fantasy. It doesn't feel too modern, it really does feel like those classic epic fantasies that you've read in the past or that you might even still read now that were published a little while back. I will say the stakes are much higher in this novel since we're not in an isolated town or isolated in the academy anymore. I will just add that the classic fantasy writing style isn't my complete favorite, but I do think it works for some reader's preferences, so I just want to put that out there. If you like that classic fantasy style, you're going to really like Justin Call's style. I personally really enjoy his stories, and I do find his writing style really easy to read and really accessible, so I do enjoy it. And I have to say, this book is like 800 and something pages, whereas Master of Sorrows was a little more reasonable at like 600, so just beware that you're in for a chonker when you get into this one. And since the writing style is the same, I didn't really have too much to add there, but we'll go into the characters. Now, the characters have endured a lot. They've had the entire first book, which kind of feels more like a prologue, which you really get to see where they come from and where they start out as young adults. But I really enjoyed how they, how some of them at least, broke off into their own adventures, into their own paths, and we got to see different perspectives in different parts of the world and the different ways that 
certain events in the previous book influence the growth or lack thereof in the characters in this book that was so interesting we also find out a little bit more of Anev's past and maybe where he could have come from there's also a lot of speculation so we still aren't totally certain about everything you get a lot of really interesting speculation and this is kind of the book where I in my opinion started to see more of that like dark lord origin story which I thought was really interesting and which is the reason why I started reading this series in the first place. Like I said before, you do find out that the other characters that might not have been as successful in the first book or at the Academy find areas where they can be successful in the rest of the world, which is actually pretty realistic and feels pretty relatable. So I also really like that piece of the character arcs because every character seems to have their own arc and their own growth. It's focused on the main character and there are, you know, a set of main characters, but you see growth in all of the characters and you see depth in all of the characters and it's not overwhelming but it's just really fun to read. In contrast to the first book as well, these characters are definitely morally gray. In the first book I felt like it was very black and white, maybe that's just because it was the teachings and the isolation of the academy and there was supposed to be that contrast between the first and second books and if so, very well done. It's definitely very contrasted, I definitely get the morally gray character feeling and the best part was that you also get to see the thinking of how a character becomes morally gray or how their logic and thought process and decision making process becomes morally gray and why and that's something fresh I don't always see exactly the type of thinking and logic and decision making logic that will come into play when a morally gray character is making a morally gray decision or kind of a decision that seems really cruel and evil but for a morally gray type of reason that probably was one of the better parts of just the character arcs and the depth that we were able to get in this book which again one of the best parts. I'm both a character and plot driven reader so I guess I'm a little selfish but the character depth in this was really great and I feel like it made up for the black and white and kind of simplicity of what I felt like was the first one. And maybe that's just because my expectations weren't set very well for the first one but in this one you had a lot more complexity where the characters are concerned and I found that to be so great. And the next two points I'm going to talk about are plot and world building and because they're so interwoven I'm going to talk more about them together and then I'll just add a little something for the world building after. Like I said the plot and the world building in this book are super interwoven. I mean as the world gets bigger and as the different characters find their place in the world you find a lot of different intricate plots that are all interwoven themselves but also very complicated and part of the world building. So as the world gets bigger, all these different plots rely on each other because there's also a lot of politics going on in the background, but the plot is moving as well as the world building. So you kind of have to have both in order to have either one of them fully fleshed out, which I really enjoy. I think that's what epic fantasy is all about. The world building really relies on the plot and vice versa. You can't really have a super fleshed out plot without a really interesting world in epic fantasy, so that was awesome and great to see. And it was just what I was asking for in the first one, but I got it in the second one, so it did not disappoint. I also understood why in the first one we were so isolated in Chambalu versus why now we get to see more of the world. You get to understand the thinking and the care that goes into making sure the first one felt a little isolated and that is also really interesting. I think it definitely takes the sequel to understand the first book and I did have that feeling when I was reading the first book like ugh this isn't going to give me exactly what I want because I need to get more into the story and if I ever reread the first book I will definitely have a newer appreciation for what it shows us and it's yeah. I really enjoyed that bit. I also love meeting all the new characters. The order that we talk about in the first book, we get to meet all those mages and all the different powers they can do. The magic system is really complicated and also can overlap and break down and combine and it's very complex that way because there are so many different combinations of magic that you can have. But that again is also really interesting. I think if you have super fans, they're gonna get really into that magic system. It's gonna be very like almost scientific but then also very like logical word-based so it'll be easy to understand at least. In regards to the plot I will say it was well paced most of the time. There were some points in the pacing where there was a lot of strategizing being done so I didn't feel like you were moving a lot. I prefer more action and small explanations of strategy versus more strategy to be kind of discussed and fleshed out so that's just my personal preference others will probably really enjoy that there was more strategic writing in the novel i just noticed that as something sometimes i just felt like okay yeah let's 
just just let's get on with it like we're just we're standing here too long like we're let's go let's do something and there's definitely one point of view that definitely felt very much like they were just standing still for too long until they had to get moving. I understand why. There was definitely like this desperation that you feel for that character, but I just wish in some points that we would just kind of get moving. But in the other plot points, in the other POVs that we're following, things were always moving at a really great pace. So I was really appreciative of the fact that this novel was really well paced and it really did hold my attention, even though it was complex and there were points that felt dense to me that I did have to go back and read a few times. And as you can see, I tabbed the crap out of it. There are so many different color tabs, there are so many interesting points, so much foreshadowing, so many things that I want to go back to when I read the rest of the books in the series whenever they come out because I think I'll be able to look back and be like, oh yes, it was right there, I saw it. So it is complex but I think that's gonna lend itself really well towards the foreshadowing and the later books in the series. I'm really excited to see if this is as mapped out as I think it is but Either way, I'm very intrigued to put the puzzle pieces together as we read more of this series. This novel does not have the same simplicity as the first one, so like I said, it is complex and if you're expecting the same kind of simplicity as book one, you're not going to get that here. It is complex, it is dense, it is definitely grimdark, but it is really interesting and it is definitely worth it. And I'm assuming that it's just going to get more complex as we go on, so I feel like I need to be really well caught up for when the next books do come out. Now in general the world building was great. We got to see way more of the world which is definitely my cup of tea. I definitely need to know more about the world before I can really enjoy myself in a fantasy novel. There were a few confusing points. We did get to visit other planes of existence if you will that aren't on a map. I kind of wish in a way that they were on a map or they were at least laid out visually because there were definitely different planes of existence that we were traveling through and there were different parts of those different dimensions that were explained having to travel through to get to the other dimension so I would have really appreciated being able to visually map that out because it was really difficult to kind of visualize that in my head for whatever reason. That was probably the only confusing part of the world building since we do have a pretty fleshed out well done map in these books. And the last point that I always go into my reviews is enjoyment and I think you can tell by this review that I enjoyed it immensely. There were still points that I got kind of stuck on but I did read this fairly quickly and I was really intrigued the whole time and I was really surprised at how complex and dense and really interesting. I really enjoyed the magic system so I really hope we get to dive into that construct more in the later books as well as maybe the planes of existence which have to do with other certain types of magic as well. So I really enjoyed this book and overall I gave it a 4.5 stars. I do think that there's certain things that could be better or just certain things that are not my preference but I do think that this novel overall for me was stronger than the first one though I can see why the first one was done the way it was done and how it lends itself to the story overall. I really did enjoy seeing kind of the beginnings of the Dark Lord origin story where things start to get a little bit rougher and more grim dark and a little bit more like intense and you see that transformation over the course of this book which was really really interesting. So if you were kind of lukewarm about Master of Sorrows I would say that the second one you'll probably enjoy better if you like the same things about fantasy in a book that I do because I definitely did. I'm definitely going to be continuing on with this series when the next book in the series comes out. I don't know when that will be but hopefully we'll have a date soon and I'm really intrigued where this first story arc, the first quartet, is going to go and then where the whole huge 12 book epic fantasy series is going to go. I will be definitely much older when he finishes this series off but I'm sure that I'll still be reading it then. Let me know if you guys read this book or if you read Master of Sorrows and what you thought of it. Let me know if you are planning on continuing on with this series like I am and what other thoughts you might have had for either of these two books. I definitely hope that you found this review helpful. I definitely had a great time reading Master artificer and learning more about our future dark lord. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please click that like button. That always helps me out a lot. And if you like my content and you want to see more from me, please don't hesitate to subscribe. Mm -hmm.